Now, though, Corrie's on the move. For over 50 years, it's been the most famous street in Britain. Perfect turn of the century architecture. Hey! Hey! It's not the same place. It is, you know. And now the street is moving to a brand new home. You've got the microwave! Well, I want the telly! Over the past two years, our cameras have captured all the hard work. There's my salon! Is that... <gasps> and the emotion. You can hear and feel the people who worked here. Oh, so sad. <sighs> During the most ambitious relocation in television history. The expectations on us and the pressure to get it right, it's just at every level been massive. So what happened when a national treasure decided it was time to move home? We all love this place and this building, and we've all had lots of happy times here. Absolutely. I've been on a lot of journeys in the show. You don't realise how much it means to you till it's gone. I love this street. It's brilliant. <laughs> this is Coronation Street, a truly moving story. OK, stand by to rehearse, please, from the top. It's December 2013, at Coronation Street, in the heart of Manchester. This is the final week of filming at the show's lifelong home at Granada Television. It's a sentimental time for members of the cast. Some have spent their entire working life here. This is the green room, all packed up. It's not good. I just walked out my dressing room for the last time, and it's weird, it's so weird. Action. It's a move driven by ambitions to take Coronation Street into an exciting new era of high-tech production. So, over a two-week break at Christmas, the show will up sticks and move its entire team of 300 crew and 70 actors to its new home, two miles away at Media City, UK. I think for sure it's the biggest move ever um, for any show, um, certainly in Britain. Financially, just the sheer logistics, the number of people involved, the expectations on us and the pressure to get it right, it's just at every level been massive. Since 1960, over 8,300 episodes have been made on this site. Moving home is a bold move with no room for error. There was this kind of general fear of, would this move somehow damage the heart and soul of Coronation Street? Would this move change the kind of very nature of the programme? This is a studio where television history seems to seep through every wall. Rose returned, Betty speaking. They've been talking about me, love, ever since I put on my first pair of nylons. I've had this room for 20 years, so it's going to be really weird leaving. Well, you see little cards from people. Oh, that's from Sherry Houston. See, I can't throw things like that away, can I? I do have this superstition that, um, uh, that if I ever made it sort of like home, I wouldn't get my contract renewed. That's, that was the sort of... So, believe it or not, I never kind of really moved in. <laughs> oh, look at that. Cyan Gale, pregnant. Same time. We've not changed a bit. <laughs> Moving to a new home can be an exciting prospect, but like most moves, there are some mixed emotions. I thought I'd be really, really sad to leave here. I've worked at this building on and off since I was 15, so for 20 years, this has been my workplace. It's all I've really ever known. I've spent more than half my life here, so, and I probably spend more time here than I do at home or anywhere else. I've been here since I was 11, so, um, I was here, obviously, and Maggie was here. What? If it isn't little Doris Stokes. Eh? And better. She's having you on. It's just weird, cos it's always been here. It's always been in this place. And obviously, we're just not coming back. I'll be crying when I go through the gaze. <laughs> I'm so pathetic. See, this chair, it was Liz Dawn's chair. And she let me have it. What's this you've been saying about my mother? Me 
haven't said anything. So I'm going to be taking that with me. Thanks, Liz. The thought of moving might not have been met with universal enthusiasm, but it's all about moving Coronation Street forward. We've just outgrown this place. As we look to the next 50 years of production, trying to be the very, very best we can, it just wasn't feasible, sadly, here. It was back in 2011 when Becky dealt out the divorce papers. Good night, my love. <laughs> and Eileen was going off the rails. Sorry, Eileen! I'm going to cut you out! When Corrie Cast and crew took time out from filming to learn about the grand plans for the future of the street. Yes, we really are moving to Salford Keys, to, um, specifically to Trafford Wharf Road. And we're going to get a fantastic, state-of-the-art new home for Coronation Street, which I think is brilliant news. A world-class production centre for the greatest show in the world. Here's the model. It signalled the start of an ambitious plan to seamlessly recreate the famous cobble set. Coronation Street at the moment is three-quarter scale. It, it was practically not possible to build it to the full size. But now, going to a greenfield site like this, we can, uh, we can actually go to the proper scale with real houses and real door sizes and real windows. But the debate is whether that will actually create a different Coronation Street. And that, that's a big challenge. And this is where a whole new weather field is going to be built. It'll be the fifth incarnation of a street that first took shape over 50 years ago in the mind of a 24-year-old writer called Tony Warren. Tony in those days was a very febrile character. He had electric energy, which of course came through in the writing. That was how he spoke, that was how he wrote, that, that was how he smoked. Did, did a lot of that. You'll try turning me out of my house. Oh, oh, you should try turning me out. Warren set about creating a world whose characters would become regular visitors into millions of our homes for generations to come. Look here, you'll only move me out of this house when I want to go. In the meantime, go jump in the cot. You... Tony Warren turned the world of television drama upside down. Suddenly, this was drama about extraordinary things happening to very ordinary people in an unexceptional cobbled back street somewhere in Manchester. In order to find that unexceptional street, Tony set off in an Austin motor car, scouring the streets of Salford with the show's designer, Dennis Parkin. We were going out to look for a street that matched the one of my imagination that I'd drawn up in the pages of the script. They stopped the car after finding a row of terraced houses called Archie Street. There was a gang of little boys. Uh, they said, have you come to see Mrs. Coleman? They all come to see Mrs. Coleman. So we went, <laughs> we went up the steps, and she turned out to be the mother of Hedy Coleman, who was the youngest of the Busby Babes in, in the Manchester United Air disaster at Munich. He was the big Salford hero, and yet somehow he was in on our beginnings. And it felt right, it felt good. Actually, Mrs. Coleman's chimney tops became almost as famous as her son. We used them under the opening titles of the show for many years. In 1960, there were 21 original cast members of Coronation Street. Just listen it, a lady. Is that where you crack on you are these days? That's a wonderful photograph, isn't it? Eva, Minnie and Martha. Philip Lowry was one of them, playing teenage tearaway Dennis Tanner. You just don't want work. Did you bother to look through the adverts in the newspapers? What papers? We only get the one in the morning. There's nothing in that you know there isn't. I'm going into Studio 2, which was the original studio. I haven't been here for 45 years. My goodness. Isn't it small? This is astonishing. Last year, these previously unseen clips of life in Studio 2 were discovered in the Granada vaults. For the first time in over 50 years, they showed licensees Jack and Annie Walker in some of their earliest scenes in the Rovers. Young Kenneth Barlow has had a punch on the nose. There was a bit of an hour, you knew, and now it's all over, and that's all there is to it. 
With outside filming too expensive at the time, all the interior and exterior sets were built in this studio. The whole street couldn't fit into this studio, so the houses had to be concertinaed, and of course the cobbles were painted on the studio floor, beautifully painted, and the pavement was painted on the studio floor. And of course it was all flat, so that when you had to go from the cobbles to the street, you had to sort of pretend to step up, which was really rather ridiculous. We all tried to avoid doing that. We all tried either to walk in the street or to walk on the pavement. But gosh, this is, this is where the historic 53-year-old Coronation Street first started, December the 9th, 1960. My goodness me. I'm very privileged, and very emotional to be in part of that. And still part of it. Gosh. December 2013, and the week before the cast of Coronation Street take their Christmas break. But this will be no ordinary Christmas, because Coronation Street is on the move. Jane Danson has called Granada Studios home for the last 20 years. This is it then, this is my final scene here at Key Street. All day today I've just kind of been thinking about like, happy memories really. Um, so yeah, just kind of uh, ready to finish now and it's been quite a long day, but um, yeah, I feel quite sad. That scene's complete and that's a wrap. Thank you for today, everyone. <laughs> Have a nice break. Yeah. Thank you so much. This feels a bit emotional because I won't come here ever again. I've been here for quite a long time, so yeah, I just feel uh, feel a bit sad. But um, now it's done, it's done, and it's it's onwards to the new place. So uh, hopefully we'll have a lot more memories there. Bye. Well, see you in uh, see you in 2014. 2014. <gasps> Scary. <laughs> Coronation Street's new home will be here, two miles away in Trafford. Over two years ago, this site, the size of over eight football pitches, began its amazing transformation into the fifth version of the street. Originally the site of Manchester Docks, the area has since taken on a new life and is now home to Media City UK, the new broadcasting heart of the north of England. It's spring 2013, and the builders on the new site are busy bringing to life all of the street's famous buildings. Four hundred thousand bricks have been used on the new lot, over a quarter of them reclaimed from derelict Salford streets. And by the summer, as the sun shines down on the new weather field, the site is ready for the stars of the show to take a first look at their new home. God, it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> really Samia Gaddy and Ryan Thomas both first appeared on the street back in 2000. They've grown up looking on the set as their second home. There's my salon! This is our first time today visiting the new, the new street, and it just feels weird. It's completely mind-blowing. It's like we've come to some parallel universe because we're still working at the other street in Manchester, so coming here it just feels really weird, doesn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. It's been such a big part of our lives for so long, and to be able to see it somewhere else, which we never thought would happen, is, yeah. is, is crazy. There's now only six months left to get the new Coronation Street ready for filming. I spoke to some of the guys who are doing the ginnel at the back. They said they're going to get a team to come in and they're going to get them to put the moss and the grass and the weeds <laughs> the in dirt. and the dirt <laughs> in between the bricks, which is an, another crazy, you know... The attention um, to detail, isn't it? Yeah, That's it, astounding. It, Just saying that this is our new home, it actually gives me goosebumps. Because it is, this is our new home now, isn't it? It's so weird. It's nice. The sheer scale and proportions of the new site 
are a far cry from the original street set. In 1967, the famous terraces were still all housed inside Granada. But one dramatic storyline was about to push the studios to breaking point. The train crash of 1967 was the biggest story that the show had done to that point. You're talking about a train coming over the viaduct and crashing and trapping people, people running around in panic, rubble everywhere, the entire cast in a panic. But also, I think, a sense behind the scenes that this was stretching them to their absolute limit and that something had to give, and they couldn't continue filming those outdoor scenes indoors. Corrie needed a suitable location for its outdoor scenes, and luck was on its side. 200 yards from the studios, in the shadow of a large bonded warehouse, lay a small cobblestoned area. And more incredibly, a railway viaduct which Granada promptly rented from British Rail. To keep costs down, it was decided to use the existing wooden studio street set, which was packed up and moved out of the studio for the short journey across the site. And on the 1st of May, 1968, natural light shone down on Coronation Street for the very first time. I will see their face and they see me back on site. <laughs> well, there it is, the street. But life for the wooden terraces would not last long. The wet Manchester weather hadn't helped, but the final nail in the set's coffin was a new technology bursting into front rooms all across Britain. Colour television. The advent of colour meant that they had to build a brick set because the wooden set just wouldn't cut the mustard on screen. After a brief stint in the 60s, Julie Goodyear returned to the street as a regular in 1970. It was virtually as I came back that it was going into colour and there was a tremendous hoo-ha that it looked too glamorous, would you believe? too glamorous. All the set designers and everything were working very hard to dampen it down, darken it down, and make it look more real. <laughs> the new brick-built and third Coronation Street set made its debut in colour on the 12th of January, 1970. Right, Bentley, <laughs> But more used to working in the warm studios, cast and crew struggled to enjoy filming on the outside set of the street. Oh, oh, it was, it was a dank hole. Um, there was a shed in it, and whenever you went in, all the extras would be in the shed, and they'd be round a tea urn. But steam literally rose from them. And life between takes wasn't any more glamorous for the leading ladies. We were given thermal vests and thermal nicks. But, you know, the character that I was playing with very often low neck dresses, clothes, it wasn't a lot of protection. So anybody who was dressed like that during takes would be wrapped in tinfoil. You did need a good sense of humour, but it really did keep you warm, that tinfoil. But filming on the new Coronation Street set of the 1970s was still limited. The front of each famous building was simply a facade. It was a flat, so there was no back to it. There was no house. It was just a flat, and that's all it was. So you used to go through a door of the street into a field, and that was it. <laughs> if you saw someone at an upstairs window, and I think memory serves that Hilda Ogden was hanging out bunting for Albert Tatlock's birthday. Oh, well, what Jean Alexander actually had to stand on a ladder behind the set to be seen in an upstairs window. And apparently, Jean Alexander actually su uh, suffers from vertigo, so it was actually above and beyond the call of duty. Throughout the 70s, as the show's popularity continued to soar, 
fans outside Granada Studios took their turn to try and catch a glimpse of life on set. Who's your favourite character? Uh, Annie Walker. <laughs> Why? Because uh, she's so posh. It was funny because you would be on the set and you would see uh, people jumping up and peering through a, a wooden flap and obviously fighting for their turn. But they just wanted a glimpse through that. And before the Granada tours began, that was the only chance there was of seeing it. And, and all they did was jump up. <laughs> On the other side of the fence, Julie Goodyear would spend a quarter of a century as Bet, and most of that time behind the bar of Britain's most famous pub. The Rovers always has been and always will be the beating heart of the show itself. It's a view shared by many of the legendary landladies. Good evening, Good evening Mrs. Mrs Walker. I love this set. Lots of actors in the show get very nervous about Rovers scenes because there are so many cast members in each scene. But to me, the Rovers is home. Over 50 years, this building has seen it all. Births. <laughs> Another little push from your tele show. Go on, bye, that's it. Deaths. <laughs> and even devastating fires. But this piece of history will be left behind in the move because over at Corrie's new home, a brand new Rovers is being built. The Rovers is just so special, isn't it? Whenever we try to change the Rovers, we've always regretted it. The patina on the bar, the, t the things that you touch, the reality of everything, you know? Every, every single thing you touch in that bar has got a history. The biggest names in British television and film have, have walked through that bar, you know? You've got to retain the fabric and the heart and the soul of the place. And if you make too many radical changes, you may lose all that and you may lose your audience. Be honest with me. Have you had any experience? God's honest truth. It was Bet that gave Liz her first job behind the Rovers bar. I'll start you tonight if you're game. I'm game. <laughs> the sets could move every week and be in a different place. But once the set is built, it sort of gets this life of its own. And that's the magical thing about it. I do think, after a certain period of time, bombs are forged. Well, hello, Vince. Terrific to meet you. Oh. <laughs> 25 wonderful years. Wish I could go back and do it all again. Really, really fabulous. I have to go now, cos I'm filling up. <laughs> It's the penultimate day of filming Coronation Street at the studios that have been its home for 53 years. And as the move to the new home draws near, one member of the crew remembers a precious item that needs packing. You know the curry vine? Barbara's going to take it home over Christmas. But it's in the quiet room and we need a box. The lady who played Ken Barlow's mother when she left, she bought them a vine, a plant, and then we moved from over there to here, and during the rubble, it got lost. And a security man found about that much of it, and we've nurtured it because they say if the plant dies, the street dies. That's the story. So as long as that plant is going, we are going. Absolutely. And that's important. So we, we look after it. Barbara! <laughs> We've got the vine. <laughs> Wait back to the vine for the last time. The vine's the leaving street. Weatherfield. Say bye. bye. <laughs> Pop that boot, Barbara. And it's going to a very good home over the Christmas festive period. <laughs> so it's been well looked after. There you go, my love. Thank you. Well done. Well, well done. There we you. go. Mm. You will look after it, won't you, Barbara? Oh, I have done for many years. <laughs> you have, my darling. <laughs> we have to go back and work now. 
Over at the new site, the builders are busy laying some of the 54,000 reclaimed cobbles needed to recreate the old Coronation Street set. Over the past 50 years, these stones have become the defining image of the street. What countless shoes have worn these cobbles down. What were their owners' thoughts and passions and lives? Oh, no! No, you don't, Baldwin! No! It is quite eerie to see the street in a Everyone different location now. And on the 22nd of August, actors Alan Halsell, Jenny McAlpine and Georgia May Foote are on the new set to witness the laying of the final cobble. The is the. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen. That was pretty momentous, wasn't it? Yeah, I got to write my name on a cobble. Yeah, That's going in the street, that is going to be here forever. History in the making. We are, we're there. But the cobbles don't just stand in front of these famous terraces. Thousands more lie in the shadows on the darker side of the street, the Ginnel. If the front of the terrace of Coronation Street is kind of the, the public face of the programme, I think, I think the Ginnel is like the private face of the programme. There's a grittiness, there's a furtiveness about the Ginnel. You shouldn't stop in the back entrance, Chuck. Folks will be talking. When people are lucky enough to come and have a... a a tour on Coronation Street, I always say you've got to come and see the Ginnels because this reminds me of proper Coronation Street. The Ginnel is the place where characters get up to no good while trying to keep away from prying eyes. Ooh, sorry! <laughs> but what will the cast make of this new back alleyway? Oh, I love it! Our affair was revealed on the new Ginnel. Oh, my God, Tina's seen us. I saw um, Jason in his boxers running down the ginnel That's when right. I was going out to the bin. That's my memory. That's right. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Is that mine? <gasps> Get out of my house. <laughs> Got loads of space in here. It's my cool and I love it. It's fabulous. It's brilliant. But this isn't the first time that the Coronation Street set has been rebuilt from scratch. Over 30 years ago, the go-ahead was given to build the fourth Coronation Street on the back lot at Granada Television. The show was going on, it was expanding, and the street was looking a little bit tired, so the decision was taken to build a set with proper houses. At three-quarters life-size, the new set of 1982 featured complete buildings constructed using authentic Salford bricks. Weatherfield had expanded, now including Rosamond Street, and filling the gap in between the terraces, Rita's brand new number seven. Well, what do you think then? Never knew I had such a clever husband. With the paint barely dry, the set was finished in the nick of time for a very special visitor to the street. I stood there and I thought, about here, and I thought, how many people think I'll, uh, I'll have a street, righteous, and, and then uh, the, on the set there'll be a, a row of houses and a corner shop and a pub. And oh my God, there's the Queen of England walking down it. And she'd come to open the new extension. <laughs> she gets to me and she said, well, uh, where, where's the real Coronation Street? I said, I've got an answer, but it's rather a crowy one. And so she said, well, what? So I said, well, we always said it was wherever you wanted it to be in your heart. Because everybody had their own idea. And she said, well, I don't think that's crowy at all. I thought, I thought she was lovely. I was a big fan there and then, that moment. She would said crowy. With the set decked out in red, white and blue bunting, the Queen came face to face with Rover's royalty including Bet Lynch, suitably dressed for the occasion. All Bet's earrings were sent in by fans, but this particular pair, there was Diana on one ear and Charles on the other. She went past and then Philip came behind and he said, I recognise those two. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. I was just a gibbering wreck. Looks like we're getting new neighbours. As the 80s turned into the 90s, Coronation Street increased its number of episodes from two to three shows a week. 
Soon, the show would be at the centre of Granada Television's very own theme park. The tour gave visitors the chance to experience life on set on various shows filmed at Granada Studios in Manchester. I don't suppose you could tell us whether Mrs T is in today or not, could you? No, I'm sorry, miss. I'm afraid that's private information. People from all over the world came. There was an American diner and there was uh, Houses of Parliament, there was Baker Street. But of course the star attraction was Coronation Street. That was the thing that brought most of the visitors into the site. I remember going on a school trip and sort of having that magical moment as like the doors opened and I walked down Coronation Street. So to end up working there was quite surreal. I remember doing a scene once and I had to run out of Underworld in a bit of a huff. I ran out to a big sign that said, quiet please, and all the tour was on the street and everybody was watching. So it was quite surreal because like one minute we were kind of like in the moment doing the scene and then the next you were like in a tourist attraction, which was a bit weird. Over five million people would visit Granada Studios tour. But in 1999, the gates were closed. When it went to four times a week in the 90s, Coronation Street couldn't continue at the pace of production with visitors wandering all over the set. And so I think reluctantly, you know, one had to go and we weren't planning to take the program off air for the sake of a tour. The closure gave Coronation Street the opportunity to expand the set. We went into Rosamond Street and then into Victoria Street so that we could see Roy's Rolls, for instance. And further down the line, the Victoria Court flats were built. The set as we know it today has evolved and aged over the decades. The brand new set must reflect every single one of these changes. According to the show's fictional history, and like the many northern terraces of its type, Coronation Street was built in the early 1900s and given its name to celebrate the coronation of King Edward VII. One of the really interesting challenges was how to get lots of incredibly skilled builders and craftsmen and designers to turn essentially a brand new build into something that looked like it had been there for 100 years. So with over a century of sulphur, wind and rain battering the street, it's the job of these scenic artists to make sure the new set looks just as weathered as the last one. A street like this in Salford would be 150 years old or more. So we've got to kind of give the age, we've also give, give the passage of time. So it means kind of making pavements cracked, it's putting mould on, on walls where there's been dammed. If you look in between the cobbles and you see the bits of grass and the bits of moss, We've had a team come in to especially do that. I mean, looking down here, you'd never know that this was actually a brand new street. We're well, just aging these bricks down, and basically trying to break up the consistency of the bricks. This wall is obviously a really old wall, so the sort of more crumbly, the better, really. And at the top here, you can see, to create the look of peeling paint, we've actually used lining paper and peeled it back and put texture over it, so it looks a bit gnarled and rubby. As the team tried to replicate every feature of the old set, they were met with one problem with very deep roots. One of the biggest things plaguing us all was the tree outside all trees, outside the, the salon. We are kind of going, well, how can we recreate that? The tree made its first appearance when the new shop appeared in 1990. Now an integral part of the street, the designers had to travel to Holland to find a suitable replacement. The tree obviously has to be a match for what was on the previous set, which was a specification, and that tree is called, its Latin name is an Ulnus incarna, and it's about 13 metres high. This is probably the biggest tree you could move without having quite big problems. <laughs> Weighing over six tonnes, it's a military operation positioning the new tree, one of the biggest to be replanted in Britain. But after five hours, the 25-year-old tree is safely nestled into its new home, outside Aldry's hair salon. It's that level of detail and stupidity, really, that's going to make this whole thing work. Back at Granada, it's an emotional day for actor Barbara Knox, who plays Rita Tanner, as she films her final studio scenes on the old cabin set. I told 
told you. I've no idea where he is. It was in 1973 when Rita sold her first newspaper in the old shop on Rosamond Street. He changed. And by 1990, she had transferred the whole premises to Coronation Street itself. Oh, very swish. Since then, the cabin has been a central figure in the street, giving us many memorable moments of great drama <laughs> and comedy. Well, I've got a tongue sandwich waiting at home. Fancy. But now it's time for Barbara to finally say goodbye to the studios in which she first set foot nearly 50 years ago. Do I look very small in this big space? Do I? It's... Ooh. Do you want to go down to the Rovers and have a look down here? Uh, see if you know what this is. Rover's fireplace. A new Rover's window. We haven't had that long. Ah. Normally, as you know, this is full of people and noise and drinking and what have you. Seems very sad to see it like that. I don't know whose this baby is. <laughs> it's a shame. <laughs> whose house is this? <laughs> You'd think I'd had a drink, wouldn't you? Whose house is this? When we're filming, you would think that was real. You know, through the window, little note, everything. Marvellous. See, I, I've never seen it like this. Ooh, that's still hot. That's only just been used. Wow. Uh, to me, I think uh, some of the essence of us, our uh, spirit or emotions, must be still in here. You can hear and feel the people who worked here. I've just been having a talk with that Dulce Froggett. Oh, oh. What do you mean, oh? Well, I don't know what she's been saying you don't to me. Oh, do I? Oh, do I? Do I? Do I? Yeah. Hey, Elsie, you're just about ready for the knacker yard. Hayley Ann Patterson, will you take Royston Cropper to be your husband and, forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Shall we have a look at the cabin? Oh, dear. My little kingdom. Oh. This is where I have spent some of the happiest hours of my life with some wonderful people. Mavis and I worked, wow, 25 years side by side. I don't think he ever sees me on the rubber gloves and the pinny. I, I could be wearing scarlet lace undies for all he'd know. And it's going to be very hard to walk through that door for the last time. We'll cry. I know we will. It's like a gift handed to you, really, to get in there and enjoy it and do the lovely stories. Oh, dear. I'm sorry I keep doing this. Oh, dear. Friday the 20th of December 2013 and after 53 years and over 8,000 episodes this is the final day of filming ever to take place on Coronation Street at Granada. Inside the studios on the Rover's return set emotions are running high. Our very last Rover scene yeah. at Granada Television. In this tumbling down building. Yes, indeed. I do feel quite tearful now, do you? Have a roll of Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Here we go. And action. I thought you were going out with Deirdre. Yes, so did I. She was sat there watching telly. She cancelled, but apparently the text didn't send. Uh, yeah, but both parties have to confirm a cancellation is in the manual. Oh, Deirdre lost her manual years ago. Congratulations, everybody. We've just Yay! completed our final Rover scene. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
Just a few yards away from the studio set of the Rovers, cast, crew, family and friends have gathered to share the final moments of filming on the street itself. Smile, everyone, for the camera. <laughs> it's been the weirdest day. So strange, the vibe all day. But, um, special, isn't it? Really special. For Sally Dinova, this has been her place of work since 1985. It's just really weird leaving here, you know, where all those people have cast members who've gone and walked up and down those cobbles for years and years. It's just really strange. I love this street, it's brilliant. <laughs> Action! Evening! Evening! This is Sally's last scene on the street. Yay! Say goodbye, Sally! Bye. 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 And action. Please call me back. Bye. Hello, it's time. That was clear. Boys and girls, that is the last shot of the last scene, PSE, Coronation Street. Merry Christmas, everyone! Yay! But there's one man on the street tonight who was there at the very beginning, the show's creator, Tony Warren. This isn't just a street of memories, it's a street full of ghosts. And the only thing I hope is to get on the right bus for Media City. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for everything. <laughs> Two weeks later and two miles away, it's a brisk January morning on the new set at Media City. It's taken 3,000 people to build the fifth and most ambitious version of Coronation Street. The terrace houses have been upscaled and are now 30% wider. This famous cobble street has grown by two and a half feet, meaning for the first time, cars can now pass each other with ease. And two of the show's most familiar sets have moved out of the studio and onto the street. Here we are, street cars. We're very pleased with it, it's great, but it still looks a complete mess, which is just how we like it. And of course, our iconic chair. Uh, which I think moved here by itself under flea power from the old studios. <laughs> so this is the new Underworld set. And as you can see, we come straight off the street, straight into Underworld, which is really different, because it used to be miles away over the other side of the studio. As an actor, I think that will make it easier, because you might leave in a huff, and then four days later have to recreate that mood out on the street, so it'll be a lot easier to do it all together. <laughs> well, of course, the biggest change, which uh, most people will probably notice, is that we actually have an extra window upstairs, which means that uh, Michelle and Steve no longer have to share with Liz in the big bed. But also, the interior of the outside set, as it were, is a set within itself. Now we can actually shoot through the doors into inside the pub. The way the set is now, we can do a lot more with it. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Let's see what they write and see what see what we get up to. The 9th of January 2014. It's the start of a new era as filming finally begins at Coronation Street's new home. You okay. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's taking a bit of getting used to, but I'm sure after today, it will be home from home. Morning! Oh, you look nice. How are you? You look lovely. Going on my date, Anna. Making history on the new cobbles. Me and Jodie. I feel as though I can't touch anything. I know, it does... I just wanted to add... It does feel like home in the studio, as soon as we're out. And action. 
It may be a new state-of-the-art studio, but some things on Corrie don't change. Having your dinner soon? Sally is still worried about Sophie. Hey, how was you going? While out on the new exterior set, Peter Barlow is still up to no good. I didn't sleep last night when I was doing this scene. I was so excited. Um, just trying to imagine what it's going to be like in head, and it's, it's just amazing. You know when you've had your living room and you've took your Christmas tree down, and it seems bigger and not the same, but it is, that's exactly what it feels like. It's taken over two years for Coronation Street to move to its new home. But now the stage is set for the future of Weatherfield. I'm excited about so many things about this new site. The fantastic attention to detail, the way that Coronation Street has been wonderfully and lovingly recreated here in Trafford. Getting here has been incredibly hard. I mean, no lies, there have been tears. Now it's all about the future and the next 50 years of making sure we're the best show on British telly and we can do it here. In half a century, over 4,000 actors worked on Coronation Street at the old Granada Studios. I want me free drink, I'll have a bottle of stout. Wait a minute, Dina, that was only for them as was here. What are you talking about? I'm all here in spirit. Only 70 of them have made the move. Je m'appelle Raquel. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? But the spirits of times past will always be with them, wherever Weatherfield calls home. Right, who's drop up? And the drama's continuing Coronation Street tomorrow night at half seven. Coronation Street's old home in Key Street will be open to the public later this year, and you can find out more about that at itv.com slash coronationstreet slash tour. Stay with us, the latest news and weather is on the way next.